So should the detention center at Guantanamo Bay be shut down permanently? And what is the alternative for dealing with these individuals who are being held as enemy combatants by the United States? Joining me now to offer some insight on this debate are J.D. Gordon, a retired Navy commander and the former Defense Department spokesman for the Western Hemisphere, and Mark Levine, former legislative counsel to several congressional committees and currently the host of the Inside Scoop and the Rockus Caucus on Pacifica Radio. Gentlemen, welcome to the heat. Thank you, Al. J.D., why don't I start with you? Should it be closed down? I don't think so. I think Guantanamo is perfectly capable to hold uh, detainees down there. It's kept America safe. It's prevented another 9-11. So I think Guantanamo really had an unfair reputation. A lot of people said things about it that really weren't the case. Um, early on, of course, Guantanamo had some problems, but they were largely cleaned up. And I think it's a perfectly reasonable place to hold detainees that want to destroy this country. Mark J.D. says we're a lot safer because of it. Look, Guantanamo Bay was set up to avoid United States law. That's the entire purpose of it. I have no problem with holding detainees. We can hold them, whether it's in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, or perhaps for trial in New York City. But the reason why Guantanamo was set up, and Dick Cheney and George Bush made this very clear, was they wanted to be beyond U.S. law. They wanted to basically take out the United States Constitution and ignore several provisions of it. I think the Constitution's good enough. I think our system is good enough. It's worked for more than 200 years. We can try these uh, terrible people to say, Way we tried the subway bomber in New York just last week. It worked out just fine. Well, these are total. Right now, there's 169. But out of those 780, uh, about 10% uh, shouldn't have been there and they were let go. But, you know, about 25% of the detainees that were released have gone back to terrorism. They've been suicide bombers and they've been uh, Taliban commanders in Afghanistan. So uh, Guantanamo is, is a good place for them. What we do in the United States, according to the Constitution, and a system that I'm very proud of, is when you're not sure if someone's innocent or guilty, you give them a trial. And you bring out the evidence. And you find out who's guilty and who's innocent. And you let free the people who are innocent. And you keep in prison those that are guilty. Remember, we have very secure prisons in the United States. I mentioned Leavenworth, Kansas. There are many, many very secure prisons where we have held the worst of the worst. We could hold them in the United States. The only reason they didn't want this in the United States is because the President of the United States, George W. Bush, wanted to avoid United States law. He wanted to avoid the Geneva Conventions. He wanted to do torture. He wanted to do a whole bunch of things that he can't do under United States law. The answer is, if this is all on the up and up, let's do it by the book. Our Constitution works. Well, J.D., you know, he's making some points here, and I'd like you to address some of them. Obviously, that's been one of the biggest uh, objections to Guantanamo Bay is that, you know, the human rights issue, that, that yeah. the United States kind of is a symbol to the rest of the world about human rights and there's been a lot of questions about the human rights and whether or not uh, they've been honored in Guantanamo Bay. It's really how you see the world. Basically uh, we're at war. We're at war with Al Qaeda. So if you take the, the war view it, it would be like saying well would you try Nazis in a, in a federal court in New York? No you wouldn't. You try them by military commissions. That's why we're trying the detainees by military commission at Guantanamo. But you hear what J.D.'s saying. What he's saying, in effect, is he wants show trials. And this, to me, this is what Stalin did. This is what our enemies do. This is what dictators do. They have these trials where it's predetermined who's going to be guilty or innocent. And you have these show trials, and you put them on, and it's predetermined. The American system isn't that way, and I'm proud of that. The answer is, in this case, is the evidence was very weak against this man. And if I understand the idea that you can't disclose all of your evidence, we have procedures in court. I used to be an attorney. You can go in camera. That's a, a Latin phrase meaning you can go in privately before the judge. You can have military attorneys represent them. I'm even okay with some military commissions, but there's no reason why this can't be done on the United States soil. The whole purpose of Guantanamo Bay, again, is to avoid U.S. law. And if you don't like U.S. law, I say change U.S. law. Don't try to avoid it or find some loophole to it. J.D., I know that you spent some time in Guantanamo. How many journalists do you take down there? Isn't that, isn't that one of the issues, though? I mean, out of sight, out of mind, and that's why we really don't, in many cases, a lot of Americans really don't even know what's going on there. Uh, that's true. Uh, in the four years that I spent in the Secretary of Defense's office as a spokesman for the Western Hemisphere, I spent a cumulative uh, six months at Guantanamo, and I've taken about 500 press down there with me. Uh, some of them were very good uh, reporters, but some were not so good, and some basically focused 99% of the reports on the 1% of detainees who were actually abused. 1% of detainees were actually abused according to all the internal investigations we did. And you know, waterboarding, that was always mentioned. You know, it never happened at Guantanamo. There was never any waterboarding at Guantanamo. Only three That's detainees true. were waterboarded. And that was not even at Guantanamo. There were other examples, though, that have come out about uh, sleep deprivation, yes, a number true. of uh, yes. issues. In fact, it seems to me that fundamentalists, in many cases, are using that as kind of a symbol to really kind of drum up support in, in Al Qaeda. It's being yeah. seen kind of as, as, a, as a tool, to, a recruitment tool in many respects. Isn't that one of the problems as well? 
some have said that but you know what the big thing that al qaeda really cares about is what bin laden says nine eleven happened before get mo they want to attack us before guantanamo the big things that they're concerned about from al qaeda standpoint is the u s presence in the middle east and the u s support for israel those are the two things they care about get mo is as a is at best just a, a sidelight to both of those things i want to give you a chance to respond to yeah. the question i gave to jd though do you see that as a concern though that uh, perhaps al qaeda might use get mo as a shining example of Recruitment? Well, yes and no. I mean, I do agree with JD that they attacked us before Guantanamo Bay, and certainly Al Qaeda, hardline Al Qaeda, is out to get the United States no matter what. My concern is not so much with hardline Al Qaeda, but with the perception throughout the Arab world. There are a lot of people in the Arab world that aren't sure whose side they're on, and they're not hardline Al Qaeda, but they're not so sure about America either. And they see Abu Ghraib, which is actually much worse than anything that happened in Guantanamo Bay. Mm -hmm. They hear that we don't have fair trials in the United States, and they're more likely, I think, to be sympathizers of Al Qaeda. My point is that the vast majority of trials in the United States are fair. We do have a strong legal system. In fact, the majority of people today at Guantanamo Bay have been cleared for release. Out of 171, there's only about 80 so hardline people. Let's bring them to the United States, have a fair trial, and shut down this. What about facility. indefinite detention, though? That's also, I know, is a concern of yours, Mark. It Somebody is. can just be sitting there for years and years and years. That's, that's actually not America. It's, it's very simple to me. That's not America. I mean, the Constitution of the United States says that you have a right to confront your accusers. You have a right to know what you're being accused of. You have a right to a speedy trial. All these things are guaranteed in the Bill of Rights. They've existed for 220 some odd years. They've done very well for themselves. If you don't like the Bill of Rights, you can amend the Constitution of the United States. But I think it works. And I think that, frankly, it's an embarrassment to the very fine system we have to say that it doesn't work. What about like, that? A limited, just, it seems like these people are sitting there for the longest time waiting for some sort of justice. Right. I don't think you should have constitutional rights for foreign terrorists. It's just like you wouldn't give uh, the, the, the Japanese during World War II, you wouldn't give them constitutional rights. You wouldn't give not the Nazis uh, un, in serving under Adolf Hitler, you wouldn't give them constitutional rights. And the, the real reason I don't want these guys in the, in the U.S. court is because they will spew their propaganda that's anti-U.S., anti-Israeli. And, you know, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, he's like a Che Guevara. He considers himself a George Washington, a revolutionary hero. He could appeal to hundreds of lone wolves and create suicide bombers because he's in New York spewing all this anti-U.S. We're anti not afraid propaganda. of their propaganda. How many awful de terrorists have we had, awful defendants who've spewed all kinds of terrible things? Uh, and I'm not afraid of their propaganda. It's a free country. Let them say whatever they want to say. Let them have a fair trial. And then I'm quite confident they'll be convicted. I'm not worried about them spewing their propaganda. I think actually they're spewing more propaganda in Guantanamo Bay than they could yeah. in a civilian trial. You know, if if they were going to be in New York, that would have been a $200 million a year security nightmare. And how much is Guantanamo Bay? Guantanamo Bay is More than lot, $200 million a year. The New Yorker Trust me. people in New York wouldn't have to have uh, barriers everywhere. They wouldn't have police pre massive police presence. So have it in and, New York, uh, upstate New York. I mean, come on. It's really not about the location. The, the, we've had all kinds of trials. We just tried the subway bomber in New York City. Yeah. He tried to bomb the New York subways. He was uh, an Islamic terrorist. We put him in jail for life. Yeah. How about O.J. Simpson? I'm not worried about, how, how about Let me just get through that out. How about O.J. Simpson? You're, you're right. Juries can return very peculiar verdicts. Juries can return peculiar verdicts. And you know as well as I do that prosecutors can bring people back on additional charges if they do. Yeah. Uh, frankly, it takes 12 to be unanimous to acquit him. If they disagree, you can try them again. We have these things in our system to yeah. deal with this situation. We're almost out of time, but if not, Gitmo, where? The United States of America. I, it could be New York. It could be Levin, Fort Leavenworth. I, we, on U.S. soil. Uh, look, I'll give you one example, though. If we catch them in the battlefield, someone who's actually fighting against us in Afghanistan or Iraq, then I'm okay with military commissions on the battlefield. But once you remove someone where they can't go back and join the battlefield, bring them to the United States, give them a fair trial. J.D., does that sound fair? Well, the only issue with that is uh, if you try them on the battlefield, that sounds great until like hundreds of Taliban swarm the, the courthouse because it's not as secure in Afghanistan. That's why they put him at Gitmo because it was off the battlefield. So uh, Mark has some good points on some things. Well, points that I agree with, but other points I don't agree with. But I think uh, all, all in all, we know Gitmo is not the best place in the world, but it's suitable. All right. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. J.D. Gordon and Mark Levine, thank you so much for joining us here.